receiving a phone call, right? You see me in my driveway. <laughs> so, you ready for Friday? Oh, I'm always ready for Friday. Usually about 9 a.m. Monday morning, am I right? <laughs> what about Axel? Is he nervous for the big test? Test? Oh, I don't know. He hasn't seemed nervous. My son is a wreck. The PSATs are a huge deal. Wait, what? The PSATs? <laughs> Darren's been prepping for months. Oh, sure, too. We bought all the practice books. Okay, 57 messages about decorating the float, not one about the PSATs. Just say it. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Wait, Frankie, out. I mean, the PSATs aren't the only thing that helped the kid get into college. That's why Greg volunteered in the golf last summer, cleaning the oil off baby color kids. <laughs> <laughs> and Sean interned at the Capitol. Okay, come on, guys. They're juniors. It's all a little nuts. I mean, we didn't do any of this stuff when we were kids, right? Oh, it's much different now. Did you hear about what happened to Doug Hornberg? He did everything right. Great grades, community service, nailed his SATs. He applied to 10 schools and didn't get into one. Now he lives at home and works for the city picking up dead animals. <laughs> 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 so we hope you are feeling now more like on the Frankie side where it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay because it will. So how many of you, this is your first round of college applications for your kids? Okay, got it, got it, got it. And, and those of you, raise your hand again, let me see who you are if you've gone through this before. Okay. So I'm looking at all. I'm looking at many of you who've gone through this recently here. So, um, does anybody have any um, words of advice from someone who's recently gone through this as a parent, <laughs> from a parent's perspective? Liza. <laughs> <Nice. laughs> yes. Put together a schedule. Pardon? Put together a schedule. Put together a schedule. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks. We can help with that too. We'll, we'll be talking a little bit about a schedule too. So any other advice from some parents, some old pros who've gone through this before? Okay. So it is a stressful, the junior year this year is probably academically, I think one of the most challenging years that your students are gonna face. I think, um, you know, they're ramping up you know, they're, they're trying to challenge themselves a little more. Um, and, you know, there's, and then all the, um, you know, just the setting some goals for the future. So it is a little challenging this year and, and stressful. And our goal is we're not here to eliminate that stress, but we are here to hopefully diffuse it and make it a little easier for families and students to really enjoy the process because it's it is milestones and we want you to um it, we want to be a time where you're celebrating with your students um and we taught the first day we have your students in seminar class jessica and i do we um we see each of them on on fridays and our mission is as a college um career and college counseling team is really to meet the students where they are. You know, we are not here to say you should be doing this, you, you should be doing X, Y, and Z. Our goal is really to meet each and every one of them, find out what they want. Do they even want to go to college? Why they want to go to college? If that's the right fit for them, and what then would the right fit for you? What do you need to be doing? And we have those conversations from the very first day about that fit. Um, and what we do say is that every person should be looking on ways to educate themselves after they graduate. That we all should be lifelong learners. But that way of learning may look different for um, different students. And so that's what we're going to be spending our junior year in seminar, really um, delving into what that fit might be for, for them and what that path, path might be. Um, we're offering some weight. We're trying to keep you guys in the loop because we know that you guys have a lot of questions. So um, we put together some resources to help, hopefully, help communicate with you. And of course, the crier, um, the crier is the best way. We always post opportunities, scholarship opportunities, 
um, educational opportunities on the choir. That's the first place we do. But we also have a, a CSD College Counseling Facebook page. Has anybody seen that yet? So if you if you really want to keep in touch with all of the college counseling, I know the choir can be really overwhelming because there's a lot of information um, out there. So if you are ever searching for some information that is specific to um, next step or college um, college planning, the Facebook our Facebook page might be the way to go to because that's where we post all that information. We also have a Twitter feed. Um, so anything that's posted on Facebook page will also be posted on our Twitter account. Um, Jessica has one and I have one. And then Jen has been working on our Next Step blog. Um, we post that several times a year. We posted, um, posted one earlier this year, at the beginning of the year. And we'll also, when we get through our September parent workshops, uh, we'll post all the videos and the PowerPoints which you'll be able to see what they're, what they're doing in ninth and 10th grade, 11th grade, and the senior workshops will all be on that blog as well. Um, and we post some other important things going on as well. Naviance, though, um, I've been talking with a lot of you, and how many of you um, are logged into Naviance? Okay, we're gonna uh, talk a little bit. Uh, so, so you're logged in, passwords are working? Okay, so here's what we would like for you guys to do. We would like for you um, to email either Jessica or myself if you have tried to log in and you don't know, or you just don't, I don't even know where to start. All you need to do is just email us. So a lot of you have been on, but if you haven't, just email us and we'll send you a password and it'll give you directions on how to get started and how to create an account. Even if you, need, if you don't remember your password, maybe you haven't had a reason to go on lately, so you don't remember it, so feel free to email us and we, we can reset it. Is there it. a difference in just logging in as your kid versus, I mean, to have there your own is. account? There oh. is. Your parents right. will have their own account, and it's really important because parents, we're needing some information from you this year to help us um, plan with your um, student this year. There's a survey, a parent survey, that only the parents can see on your account. So... Um, so you, have, you can see most of what the students are doing. You can't manipulate the information, um, but you can view it from a parent's um, account. Okay. Um, so in ninth and 10th grade, the, probably the reason why a lot of you guys aren't on it, because you really didn't need to be on it. The students were on it um, through seminar. In 10th grade, we really focused on the career planning, trying to figure out you know, what's important to them, what are their values, what are, what are the things, what are their interests, what's their personality, what kinds of people they like to work with. All that's important as they're trying to figure out um, who they are and what makes them tick. And we spend a lot of time in 10th grade doing that in hopes that by the time they get to 11th grade, we'll be, um, you know, then we'll be uh, trying to take where they are, and then let's think about a college fit or a next step fit, whatever that may be, and let's helping us come up with a match. Hopefully, they'll know themselves a little better. Um, in 11th grade, they'll be spending time doing college search. There's a ton of college search tools on there. We've put our most the, the links that we feel like are most important to students We've put those on the home page. They're all down on the left. You can access SAT, you can access ACT. And then we also have an electronic binder, notebook. It's called Live Binders, that whenever we find a really important resource, whether it be scholarships, we have a scholarships tab, women's college, women's colleges. We have um, um, financial aid, how to access financial aid resources college search tools. So we have all that um, in one place, in one binder, on, in Naviance. Again, it's one of those links. Um, so we hope you spend some time kind of um, delving into that. The students will be spending this year working, working through all those resources. So um, again, you'll be able to see, if you need to see this website, you'll be able to see all this on the Naviance. So um, you can see when you pull up Naviance, you'll be able to see um, under the Colleges tab, because that's where your juniors are going to be spending most of their time, 
you're going to see, um, you can see some tools where you can um, see a map of the colleges that have accepted our students. And you can see a list. So we've had some students that have been applying. We've actually had some in California now um, who are actually attending. So you can then see where they're attending, some colleges where they're attending, and of course, Southeast is. And then you can see our 20 most popular colleges for our students. So I know you can't read that, but UNCC and App State and NC State, so our South Carolina, South Carolina and Chapel Hill are our top five, so our state schools. And then you come, then we start getting down to some private schools in there too, so our top 20. So that's always fun to go and, and look at. So um, just to give you an idea of um, what they're going to be doing this year in seminar with us, um, we spend, if you go on Schoology under their, uh, under their um, junior seminar, you'll see, a, a, we encourage you to go with them to look at the, um, at the syllabus and follow along because what we hope you do is have conversations with your students about what they're doing in seminar. And like last week, we talked about, um, you know, how to use college visits um, and what kinds of questions asked, what were good questions, what were, um, what were important questions asked. We've had, we've had um, admissions at Davidson College that say, you know, every time he comes, he goes, your students ask such great questions. And they do, and it's really because they've had practice. They've, listen to as a ninth and tenth grader they've been kind of going just to kind of get their toes wet they've been attending college visits and they're learning how to um they're learning from the upper class and about how to, what are some good questions oh i never thought about that that would be important to me so they're really learning from each other so we hope you take time to go and and um and look at this and look at the syllabus um what we're going to be doing this year we get are, well, when does this happen and when does that happen? So here's your one-stop shop. And so this will be on, this is on Naviance, this is on our Next Step blog, this is in our live binder, this is down the street on a light pole. Like we try to put this guy <laughs> ever for you. It's on the Schoology page, on the junior Schoology page. So if you go under your students' courses on Schoology and go to junior seminar, that's where this will be. Um, if you are the type of person that wants to know everything that's going to happen for the next year and a half all at once, then scroll freely through this document. If you are the type of person that says, give me a week at a time, otherwise that stresses me out, scroll slowly through this. Because <laughs> what we've done is we've kind of chunked out the junior year, going through summer into your student senior year to give you an idea of what's coming next, what to be on the lookout for, what you don't need to worry about until May, because it's down there under May, so in September you don't need to be stressing out about it. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea, right now you're right on track, you're attending our meetings, your students are coming to seminar. I know you all can't do that because it's kind of blurry. Um, but like I said, it's posted in many places for you to find on your own time. Um, getting hooked up on Naviance is another thing that's happening right now. Um, testing, all that good stuff. So we're going to kind of walk you through all of these things in tonight's presentation too. But just so you know, it's all in that one place. So like I said, scroll slowly or quickly, whichever, whichever creates less stress for you. All right, so one of, the, um, one of the big things for juniors this year is to take advantage of our college rep visits that we have on campus. Every fall, we have a number of college representatives that come and host info sessions for our students, get a chance to have those one-on-one -on -one conversations with them afterwards to answer those questions, and really get that face-to-face -face time as the majority of the time, the representative that comes here from a college is that first one to read our students' applications, and so they're able to put that face with a name when they're reading through the application and really advocate for our students when, when they're seeking admission to their schools. On Naviance, that's where students will sign up. And once again, sorry, it's so blurry on there. Um, but that's all the colleges we have scheduled already just through um, October, and that was a couple days ago. We actually had one come spur of the moment this afternoon, and we had 20 kids come in an hour's notice to come see, this, come see the college. So students are really excited about this. Um, be sure if, you're, if your student isn't talking about going to see colleges when they come on campus, ask them, who else coming? Let's log on to Naviance and see who's coming up next. 
Um, we have some of the, the major ones, one of some of our top, our top popular ones we have app today. I think we had about what, 55, 60 kids um, come to the app visit today. We have Clemson, College of Charleston upcoming, Elon, Furman, we have out-of-state schools coming. It's a great way to, one, show that interest in the school. So if it's a school that cares about demonstrated interest, meaning they want to know that you know who they are and why you like them, this is a great way to check that box off. There will be a, a sign-in card or a sign-in sheet at every visit, so students are encouraged to make sure they leave their information so that way colleges know who else coming to check them out when they come on campus. All right, so Anne-Marie kind of touched a little bit about this earlier, but basically our, our first and our primary goal is to figure out where, where your students are, meet them where they are, and help to, to cut their own path that's the right path for them. So in spending time with them in seminar and doing the different phases of the parent survey and the student survey, it really helped us get a sense of who each student is and what they're looking for out of their next step experience. So that first session, like Amory mentioned, is a, is a two-fold session. So the first part that parents do is that survey that's on Naviance. And so when you log on to your Naviance page, you'll go to that About Me tab. And it's in the same place that your students' surveys are found. And so they're used to going on there and finding their surveys. You can only access your survey from the parent account, but it's in the same place that a student survey would be. So if you get confused and need help, your student can show you where that is. But it's under that About Me tab, and it's right there on that, on that left-hand side under Surveys to Take. It'll be called the Parent Survey for the Junior, Junior Parent Survey for the College Search Process, or some wordy title like that. We like to make wordy titles, apparently, around here. Um, so that'll be a, a first step for you guys, and then we'll also be meeting with all of the juniors one-on-one -on -one to go over the surveys they're going to complete in junior seminar to make sure we have a good, a good handle on what they're, what they're showing for their surveys. And then we all retreat back to our, our team meetings, and for the next couple months, we'll roundtable every single junior and come up with a best fit list of 8 to 10 to 12 schools, summer programs, gap year experiences, any kind of next step that would be a great fit for that student will compile that list and gather all that information. And then the second round is when you and your student come back to us late January, early February. We'll go over that best fit list, um, talk about different options, talk about testing plans, and we'll also talk about your senior courses and get your student registered for their senior year of high school. So that's an exciting meeting. <laughs> but we, it hinges on that parent survey too, so make sure if you can't get on Naviance, you email your counselor. I'm A through J, and she's K through Z, so just email um, whoever you fall under, so that way we can make sure we get everyone taken care of in a speedy process. All right, um, the next goal is, is to really help students figure out where they want to apply or where they want to do more research on if they want to do a gap year program or something like that. Um, and that comes partly from that recommendation list that we'll give in the spring. But it also comes from their experiences they're having right now by coming to those info sessions, by taking advantage of our U visit days where we have the days off at the end of October, those teacher work days. Get out there and go visit some colleges. You definitely don't need to wait until you get this list from us in the spring. It's not some kind of magical list that, that starts your college process. It, it's meant to enhance your college search process. So by all means, don't wait for that. Go out there and start exploring schools that that your students are interested in. Um, if they're not really sure what they want to do quite yet or what schools they're interested in, just start by size. Think about a small public school, a medium-sized private, and a small public or a small private. You know, try to just try out the different sizes to see how those feel. That's always a really great place to start when if students and families really have no clue as to what college they want to start looking at. UNC Charlotte is a great example of a, of a large public school we have right down the road. So that's a, easy, easy tour to make. All right, fun testing time. Andrea? <laughs> so students in the junior year get to take lots and lots of tests. Um, first up for your students will be the PSAT, which will be on October 19th. Here at school, during the school day, that is the test that is the National Merit Scholar Qualifier Test in the NMSQT. Um, that will take a very select group of students across the nation. They'll hear much later, if you're in the junior year, so the beginning of senior year, um, if they qualify. 
But it's really good beyond that piece. It's a really good practice SAT. I think it's one of the best pieces of information they can use when they start to look at what they do well on for the SAT and what they need to work on for the SAT. When students take the PSAT at school, they're given their, um, their test booklet so they can go home and they can, on the computer, they'll have information and a code so they can log into the College <coughs> Board website and see exactly what questions they missed and they see explanations of their answers. So it's a really great way for them to study the things they need to study for their first sitting of the SAT. They'll get those PSAT results back sometime in early December, usually. They have it, um, most of our students will take the SAT for the first time, maybe December or January timeframe. So taking the SAT and or the ACT, generally students take those um, at least once, possibly twice between December and June. Um, they're, they're advised of what a good time frame may be for them. All students in North Carolina public schools will take the ACT, and our day for that this year is February 28th. Is that right? So they'll take that, oh, and it's up there. <laughs> um, so they'll take that here at school during the day as well. That is a test that they will use, or they can use, to send to schools, and the state of North Carolina, North Carolina pays for it, so it's a free college admissions test that they have that they can send to colleges as one of their official test scores. Um, again, so they'll have that result back in plenty of time to take the ACT again. Um, generally, students will look at their test schedule to see when they want to take that second ACT if they want to. June can get really busy for students, um, particularly if they have to be, if they're in um, AP classes, there's a lot of testing that goes on, and if they are taking SAT subject tests on top of that, it's just a lot of fun for them. Um, <laughs> taking two to three SAT subject tests, this is only if your schools require it, um, and actually this year there were quite a few schools that kind of dropped that, um, just you all don't have to live through the changes of um, SAT that um, this year's seniors went through, so hopefully things will be settled down for your kids and you don't have to worry about old SAT, revised SAT, you just have the SAT again now is all we talk about with you all, so that makes it simpler for you. Um, and so just know that we'll give the PSAT and they'll get that result back for testing um, to prepare for the SAT, and then they'll take the ACT here. Then registering for any other tests that students will need to do that on their own. And there are links on Naviance for that. Okay. If you are a student who has testing accommodations, now is when you need to be in contact with your counselor. Um, there, there's extra paperwork that um, College Board and ACT require for um, approving those testing accommodations, so make sure you get that um, communication going if you haven't already. Your counselors can help you with fee waivers for the tests, so that um, if the cost of taking those tests and the cost of submitting those scores to colleges is a burden for your family um, and you qualify, um, they can help you with getting those fee waivers secured. And um, registering for the test, we can sit and show students how to do that, but for the SAT, and for SAT subject tests, you'll do that through collegeboard.org. And for the ACT, that is actstudent.org or just act.org, you'll get there. Um, and then they'll take care of registering for all of the tests except for the PSAT. The school will handle that in the, in the school during the school day. And for that um, February ACT, students will do that as well. Um, here at school. They'll, that'll be taken care of by the school. Um, sometimes it gets a little tricky if students are taking the test ahead of time if they create a College Board account with a different email address. Just if you're registering them, use their student, or hopefully you're not registering them, hopefully they're registering themselves, but um, when they're registering for these tests, if they'll use their student email address, that will make things much simpler for them. Um, sometimes we have to get the companies to consolidate their accounts. Um, and then the SAT, ACT test prep here that we have at school. How many of you have a student in that class? Good number. Okay, that is time where students get um, 
self-directed time to prepare for those tests. I know um, my daughter was in it last year, and they'll work with the students on timing issues, how to take the test, also some of the content, but they're also allowed to focus on what they need to focus on for that test um, as well. So for example, if you have a student who's only going to take the ACT, and you need all of that class time devoted to the ACT, that's something that you can coordinate with the teacher um, and make sure that they're doing test prep in a way they need. Um, and so that's what happens in the test prep course. And they use the official books for that, which is um, where your best test material is going to come from. All right. Will you take the ACT or AC, SAT, ACT, or both? I've gone over that. Generally, students will take one of each and see which one they do better on. We'll help them figure that out if they need help figuring that out. And um, the timeline of those generally starts, but you know, sports schedules and things like that can make testing tricky. So it's good to look now at the test dates that are throughout the year. These are not offered every single month, and subject tests definitely aren't offered um, all the time for every test session. So you need to kind of chart that out now when you think they may take those tests. Um, how many times should you take the test? Uh, generally, students take the test the first time, and when they take it a second time, their scores will go up. Um, that's if they're doing something different to, for that second sitting. And then um, if they take the test a third time, if they really spend some time digging into the things that they've missed and where their areas of weakness are, they can see a, another bump in their test scores. It's typically not as big as a bump from the first test to the second test. And then after three times, Scores really do sort of level off, and sometimes we even see scores go down um, because of burnout. <laughs> and so, you know, having them just test and know when they've done what they can do with the test and moving on and letting it be what it is is a good thing to do. Um, schools don't typically look favorably on students that send them five and six um, attempts at a particular test. So, um, just let them know that they need to do something to prepare for the test. Don't just go into the test cold, just to see how they're going to do on the test. They should do some preparation before they sit for that test the first time. They should know, do I bubble all the answers? Do wrong answers count against me? Things like that. Um, and then subject tests, just check the schools you think you may be applying to, to see if they're required um, and which subject tests are required of any for those schools. It's, it's pretty uncommon that those are required. Now you sometimes will see that they're recommended um, at some schools, and some schools will take the scores if you send them in. Otherwise, they don't worry about it. And Cindy? Yeah, OK. OK. So there's two big questions that we get from parents. Does anybody want to guess what the biggest one is? Money, yes. <laughs> Anybody worried about that? Yeah. So how do we pay for this? We have a whole other night for that. We can work, we'd be here till 10 o'clock if we went over all that. But the other big question is, so how much of this are we supposed to do as parents? Because you don't want to be too pushy, and you don't want to not do anything, and your kid, like Frankie and Axel, you know, you don't know what's going on. So I'm going to go over job descriptions in this process. So please pay attention. We're going to go over student responsibilities, so that's clear, parent responsibilities, and then counselor responsibilities, so that you all know what we are doing, um, and you'll know what is expected of you. I like to use the metaphor of a car. A lot of you have new drivers, so you can relate to this. I believe the student should be driving this car. The parents should be in the back seat, cheering on the student, encouraging, Counselors can be in the front passenger seat, kind of guiding and navigating. If you feel like you are in that driver's seat and your kid's texting on the curb, not paying attention, <laughs> not even aware that you left, um, that's a problem. If you find yourself touring without your child, this is a problem. <laughs> it's not good. And you may be on the opposite extreme where your kid got in the car already and she's driving off and she left you. Anybody feeling that way? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, Everybody approaches this a little different. Some students are gung-ho, ready to do it, cannot wait, and some parents are gung-ho, ready to do it, cannot wait, and their, their kids do not feel this way. So what do students need to know that they have to do? 
they really should take the lead. This is their life. We will give them that message repeatedly in seminar, um, but this is something that's for them. You guys already did this. You know, the, the greatest um, irony, I think, of the college admission process is that at the time of their lives when students most need your wisdom and your advice and your life experience is the time they are the least likely to hear it and the least likely to ask for it. Um, so it's frustrating, definitely. Um, but they should be taking the lead in this process. Keep up with all the plan college plan materials and events. They should be using their school email. Hopefully your students are doing that quite a bit. Um, they should be scheduling the tours or interviews with college. It's just a few clicks. They don't even have to call anyone on the phone to schedule a tour. So I recommend that you tell them, you know, these, these are dates we can go tour colleges. Go schedule it. Let me know what time. And walk away, okay? Make them in charge of this. And they need to print out the confirmation and the directions for parking. Sometimes there's parking passes. They really need to take ownership of this process. They'll treat it differently if they feel like it's their thing than if it's your thing. Um, listen to recommendations from others. Like I said, they may not listen to you. Um, even though you're with, you are, you can tell them quite a bit. Um, but they should try to listen to adults that they trust. Hopefully you're one of them. Um, take their college research seriously. They'll do a lot of that in seminar. Start your activity, an essays and activities list in seminar. They'll have a lot of time to do this, to work on a resume. They'll start essays in the spring. They should show up senior year with some things accomplished for their um, application. Or they can play games on their computer. Uh, so hopefully they will be using that time well. And then be the strongest student they can be. This is the part they cannot go back and fix later. That's the GPA that we just can't fix after junior year. It is what it is. But those are their roles in this process. Parents. You're already doing the first one, so good job. Um, attend college planning events and individual sessions. Definitely do that parent survey on Naviance. Every year, um, we're always surprised at how few parents fill it out. So we really hope this year's class breaks the record and everybody fills it out. Um, help students plan campus visits. Attend, excuse me, attend with them. Um, you don't want to just send them off to wander campus by themselves. Don't go that extreme. You should listen in. You're investing in this decision in a very real way, so you should be part of that process. Um, inform students of any limits on college cost and location. We know some of your kids are dreaming of Hawaii. They've told us. <laughs> They're excited to go to California or study in England for college. Um, you all need to be talking to them about some limits. Uh, what is reasonable for your family? A lot of parents, I think, make the mistake of wanting to be able to afford anything and they tell their students, don't worry about it. We'll figure out the money later. It's okay, don't worry about it. And the kids think this is just great. And they go and look at schools that are over $70,000 a year. There are schools like that. Um, not ever looking at the price tag, not thinking about scholarships, which is more work for them, right? But you said they could pay for it, so they don't have to do scholarships. Oh. But you need to let them know, because if they get into those schools that are 70,000 and you can't pay for it, that's a pretty awful conversation after they get in. So have those conversations. Um, we will talk more about financial aid, but there are ways that you can start getting um, estimates. They're called net price calculators. And every college's website has a net price calculator on their financial aid section. And this is where you can anonymously put in information about your family's income and assets and they will give you a ballpark figure. Um, so this could help you start to guide your students um, toward what's reasonable for, for them. Um, begin researching the financial aid process. We'll talk about an event coming up. And then um, encourage and support your student. They're scared. They're excited, but they might be a little scared too. So talk with them about, you know, if you went through this, what this felt like for you, or older siblings, or cousins. Um, talk with them about their feelings. This is a big, huge life transition, and they all respond differently to that. We recommend a book called Admission Matters by Springer Writer, Vining, and Morgan. It's a good overview of the process with good tips for parents. Okay, what do we do? You guys have a lot of jobs. Uh, we will provide information and resources to facilitate
facilitate the college planning process. So like we shared earlier, lots of um, online resources and events. We'll get to know each student and his or her individual interests and goals. We promise to do that through our individual process. Uh, we'll make research-based recommendations for each student. We usually in our roundtables have to set a timer because we will go on for half an hour on each kid. And that's a lot of kids, <laughs> so it's you know February before we're done. So uh, we have to stop ourselves at 10 or 15 minutes um, because we're having so much fun thinking of ideas and great um, possibilities for each student. And then we promise to be available to families for questions around the college application process. Um, tomorrow morning we are hosting a little Q&A because a lot of parents just want to have some longer conversations about this as you launch this process in your family. So uh, we welcome you to come tomorrow morning at 8.30 and we will be here ready for you. Um, you may have seen this on the crier. I want to go. <laughs> it looks like fun. The West Coast College Summer Tour is June 12 through 17. There's just a, an information session coming up September 27th at Christ the King. This is a joint effort with a number of um, private and charter schools in the area. So this could be an interesting experience for your student to see some schools um, and have some educational adventures along the way. Cindy, Cindy if, yes. if you think you might be interested, um, have a student that's interested in that, if you could email me and let me know that you'll be attending, um, or if you need more information to make up your mind if you want to go, just send me an email and we can talk about it. So. All right. We have a workshop coming up with an expert, um, David Galinas from Davidson College. He's the Director of Financial Aid and he's presented for us before. This will be at Davidson College on Tuesday, October the 18th. It's a joint program with some other schools in the area that he's um, providing this. So we're very lucky to have him. It's a, a very good workshop. The financial aid process has changed a bit this year. If you have older students, you might remember that the FAFSA was available um, January the 1st, FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid that you need to fill out for financial aid. This year, starting this year, it's available October 1st, and they'll be using the tax information from the year before the year before, prior, prior, the year before the year before your student starts um, college. So for the current seniors, they're looking at 2015. Um, for you guys, it'll be this year. So your taxes, your income and assets for 2016 is what will be considered for your students' freshman year in college. So a lot of you know, ripple effects from that big change, um, but that's something to be aware of. Every year we like to offer a book talk. Last year we had um, Where You Go Is Not Who You'll Be by Frank Brumey. It was wonderful. Um, this year, I hope some more parents can join us. There is Life After College. We'll be leading this in January, so you have plenty of time to read this book. It's, um, it's great. It talks about the new economy that students are going into. Um, it's, it's a very interesting read. You may not agree with all of it, which is more fun, right? So um, read that if you're interested. If you don't read it and still want to come and just hear the discussion, you're more than welcome. And we'll put out some reminders about that. We have a few more events. You visits, you may have heard of. These are days off of school, but days that would be great for you to go look at some colleges. October 31st and November 1st, and then again February 16th and 17th. It's great for students to visit colleges while students are on campus. So it's, um, you can really see the life of the campus. National Portfolio Days for artists who may be, visual artists, who may be submitting portfolios for art schools, and that's November 20th. Uh, the USA Gap Fair, February 12th, if your students have started talking about taking a gap year and you say, yeah, I want a gap year too. Um, just step away from life for a year, that'd be great. Let's all go to the gap year fair. Um, gap year is a year between, between high school and college where you can go and do something else for a year. Serve, work, um, all sorts of things. Learn a language, travel. There's some really interesting programs out there. So if that piques your interest at all, there's a number of gap year programs coming to Charlotte in February. And then the NACAC College Fair, lots of fun. So, uh, that's in March, and there will be thousands of people at the convention center at lots of tables like that, and it's a bit overwhelming, but we'll talk to students about how to navigate that. Um, 
the last word of advice is have fun with this. You're going to remember this process with your child, no matter how it goes. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be a good memory. Um, enjoy it. It will be over before you know it. And on the bottom it says, we believe that the college admissions should be a, a process that feels hopeful, magical, exciting, non-threatening, and self-reflective. Can you tell Joy was in the room when we wrote that? <laughs> but she needs it. She wants this to feel magical from kindergarten all the way through the end of your experience here. So we do hope that you can enjoy the process and all the opportunities that your students have before them. So that is the end of our presentation. We uh, think have a little time for questions, if you all want to come up, and we'll start fielding them. Here we go. I know that the idea is I'm supposed to sit in the back seat and cheer them up. <laughs> yeah. I also know that if I do that, a year from now, the car will still be in the driveway. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be the, oh, was I supposed to look? And it's not because they don't care, it's because they're so intimidated. Yes. I have twins who don't know what they want to do, yes. don't know where they want to go. They just, really all they know is they want to make enough money so they don't have to live at home when they're done. It's a good goal to have, right? And, and, <laughs> which is my goal, too. Yes. Right? Um, so I ended up just caving after telling them, hey, you've got to look at this, you've got to look at this. Today, I booked toys at uh, NC State in Chapel Hill because I knew it was never going to happen otherwise. <laughs> so, Just dragging along to start with. Do, do you guys crack the whip on them at all three <laughs> 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 That's why we had 20 people that came at 7th, 8th period today. Yeah, so we, yeah. we do make an assignment <laughs> in both junior and sophomore seminar that they have to attend at least one yeah. college rep visit on campus. So for those students that aren't quite ready, you know, and raring to go in, in September, they have to do it because it's an assignment, but hopefully that'll pique an interest when they're there. And they come to more than one session, but we do kind of do that as a, as a way to get them involved. You know, and some students, spring is their, is their season where they peak and getting excited about schools and getting excited about going out and touring colleges. Once they take the PSAT in the fall and, and friends start taking the SAT or the ACT, it starts to feel a little more real and a little more like, okay, I'm ready to start thinking about this. Um, and so some students aren't ready to go visit schools until spring, and, and that's when they're ready, and that's when you guys can hit the road. Every year we offer college visits as an intercession choice. And so remember, intercession, those are those three days right before spring break. And so students can choose to do a college visit during that intercession time to give them basically two full weeks of spring break to go out and tour some schools, and since college spring break and high school spring breaks don't line up, it's still a great time to go on those campuses when the college students are there. Um, so you do have some time in the spring as well, so don't feel so much like, okay, well, if we don't get out there this fall, then we've lost this time. So maybe that, hopefully that takes a little bit of a look. You can, you can schedule the tours for the fall and schedule the tours for the spring. <laughs> really trying to encourage them. Don't, don't think you have to have it all figured out before you go. Just go window shopping. Just, you know, we're really encouraging them to go to look for patterns of things that they like. You know, they may, and, and we're really trying to encourage them that they may think they want a big state school, but how do you know that? You know, if that's all you know, how do you know? So, you know, we're really trying to encourage them to branch out, and this is the year to be doing that. So... I think a great tip for students that are reluctant, take them to sporting events on college campuses and while you're there, go by the bookstore, walk around and grab some food on campus. That's a college visit as well that's less intimidating to some of the less enthusiastic amongst the students. It's a great tip. And or an art event on a campus, like an art exhibit. A lot of times they'll have art exhibits or, or shows there too, plays. And the other thing that I was going to say is that also they have junior visit days sometimes juniors, so if they know that that's the only grade that's going to be there that day, sometimes that'll get them on board um, a little bit more as well. Sometimes those junior visit days are larger events, so they can seem a little more overwhelming to students that don't like big crowds, but just knowing your student will help you figure that out. And when they start taking, after they take the PSAT in October, oh boy, you know, they'll start <laughs> getting mail. And so that will strike up some conversations as well. And no, it won't. <laughs> <laughs> when it's a semester, you want to get all the emails. So I just have a folder. I just drag it in because I don't want to look at it. But well, she's already attended a college in the session on campus. This time. Yeah, because I saw her. She just built it into it. No, it wouldn't have been 
on, on Schoology, why don't you shoot one of us an email and we'll make sure you're doing the right. I remember doing a survey about college, but mm -hmm. I just don't know. We could look at look it up and see. Family connection, yeah. Family connection, yeah. Yeah. connection. Yeah. 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 that is. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And then a lot of students opt to take the June SAT a second time around or an additional time around in June. So May seems to be a really good time for this test. Anything else? Oh, you in the dark spot. Is there a place now that you can go fill out like a master form instead of 55 different applications? Mm -hmm. It just saves it all in, like, oh, okay, click this. Like, For college applications? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so there um, is the common application, which not every college or university is a member of, but there are a good number of schools that are members of the common application, and so that is something that students will go in and they'll fill out one main application that will populate into any of the member colleges that they add to their list, and then they'll just have supplemental information to fill out for each individual school. Um, there are a few schools in South Carolina that use a common, not common application, but a common tool like that as well. Um, and USC and Clemson are on a, a common one together. Um, but for the most part, once you once you do one, save it as a PDF and just kind of copy the information over if they're not on one of those shared application sites. There's also your your students probably going to see another um, another kind of common application next year when they're applying or their senior when they're, when they're applying called the coalition and many schools are um, that's a, a new initiative and um, it because it's new some some schools for instance chapel hill and nc state have opted to wait a year and see you know get the kinks signed out and everything and so many schools are given our seniors this year an option to apply uh, using the coalition or the common app or their own online Next year, you're probably, your students are going to be seeing it more, probably the coalition. So we'll keep communicating with you a little bit about how that's going and, and maybe make some suggestions when we know more. Colleges, you know, we're, we've been meeting with many colleges throughout, um, throughout the month, and they're still, you know, trying to assess the situation and, and how they're going to use the coalition. Um, do you guys, when you're looking at all this information, look at what might be best for the student regarding stair-stepping into certain situations? Let's say um, they're coming from a small school, but yet their target is a large school, and you know what kind of the, like let's say years ago UNC Charlotte might have been a stepping stone to get to NC State. Do you guys do that with the students to let them see where the schools are that kind of feed into other schools or um, possibly where there may be some challenges. If you go into this school, you may have trouble transferring grades over to this other school. Do you go into that kind of level of work with them this year? Yeah, we talk to them um, in this, it's more of in the sense of um, best fit for admissions. So perhaps their goal is an NC State. Um, which is a, which they base their admissions on a very numbers driven um, assessment. So GPA, test scores, rigor, course schedule, um, and maybe maybe testing hasn't been that, that student's shining point. That's not the best showcase of that student's talent. Um, but NC State is where they know they want to go. And so yeah, we can certainly talk about a process to get to the phase where they can transfer into NC State. Um, but that's one of those things where, where we definitely meet the students where they are and, and focus on those individualized paths to get them to the options that, that they're looking for. Is that how? Did you? Yeah, what does super score mean? So super score, yes. So say you took the SAT two different times and your reading score, I'm saying the wrong ones now, it's the this critical reading score, um, was higher on your April test than it was on your October test, but your math score was higher in October than it was April, the super score would be the highest of each section across the dates that you take it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yes? Um, I actually had a question about the West Coast College Board. Yeah. There was some information that mentioned that each school would be limited to six students. How would that be determined? And is there like a predetermined list of colleges that would be visited at that time? Natalie, I can answer that for you. Um, we we are, are still fine tuning that list. 
but the number is kind of up in the air, so I can't answer that but either, but you and I can have a conversation about that. So if you, you know, if you, if you want to go, just email me and we'll, we'll have some conversation about how to make that happen for you, okay? Um, but the schools are probably maybe Stanford, Santa Barbara, um, some, um, some, of the, some of the different coalition schools, so, you know, so we'll kind of fine tune that. They'll have that fine tune by that meeting. Yeah. All right, well, we are a few minutes past eight.